guys, coming at you now with the latest episode of the Monogram 1985 Hero GT build. And uh, let's take a look at the progress we got going on so far. Okay, tonight we have the engine installed into the chassis. Struts all done and painted up. Yeah, you can see it's all in there, subframes in there. Chassis is completely detail painted. May do a little bit of weathering on it, but apart from that, the chassis is pretty much done. Now, one thing I want to mention about installing the engine. When you, as the instructions want you to install the shocks into the, the uh, cradle and then you're going to install the whole assembly let's get this spear out of the way into the chassis uh, my recommendation when you're doing that because you're going to have a lot of attachment points both all four points for the uh, subframe the strut where it contacts the spindle and the strut where it locks into the chassis. What I would recommend is that you use a very slow setting glue and just as it's tacking up uh, you take you install the uh, subframe and the slow sitting glue would allow you to move the strut because as you're trying to line everything up, you're going to find that the strut having to go into the uh, wheel wheel here, into the strut tower, things aren't going to exactly line up. So you're going to have to move that strut around a little bit. And if you use a so slow setting glue, and you install it just as the glue is getting tacky so that it's, the strut will stay on the spindle because there's no way to attach it. The spindle just kind of sits, uh, the strut just kind of sits in the spindle. There's no real, nothing that really uh, holds it in other than the glue. When you're lining everything up and you're trying to install the subframe, you're going to need to move the peg that goes into the strut tower. You can see it coming out here. You're going to need to line all of that up. So you're lining up the subframe. You're lining up the strut tower. At the same time. Um, so you're going to need a little bit of adjustability. And that's where the slow setting glue comes in. As it won't harden for... It takes a long time for it to harden. So it gives you time to just move everything around. So that you can line it all up and get it all in there. I use the testers non-toxic cement because it's got a lemony smell and uh, I know a lot of people don't like it but I find that for this purpose that cement is perfect because it takes does take a very long time for it to uh, set up and that's what you need as you're lining up everything because you're gonna need all that adjustability to get all four mounting points for the subframe and both struts to line up together. So I find that that is the easiest way to get it all together. And here we have a look at all the detail work on the engine. It really fills up the engine compartment nicely. I have a few more things that I'm planning on adding to this, which hopefully will all work out but it does really fill up the engine bay nicely. And now, the other thing we did tonight was we have started the detail painting on the body. This kit, as I'm building it, is very reminiscent of the Ferrari Testarossa, which I built, which is also a monogram kit. 
as the bodies have quite a few details that need to be added and painted uh, as it's going together. Tonight, after I painted the, uh, gave the body its color coat, a nice glossy coat of red there. Tonight, I added the lower trim as the 1985 Fiero GT had a silver lower accent color. It was only the 1988 cars, which had a monochromatic scheme. Every other one had a uh, two-tone paint scheme, and the 85 GT ha had silver lower accents. So we have the silver accent on the body. Here we have the bumper done. And the two side panels. Which will be installed here. It's going to involve... Now we have to do all the black trim on the body. Which is going to involve quite a bit more masking. As tonight was... A lot of time spent masking off... The body for the silver trim. As you can see, even inside the air intake there, it's silver as it is on the real car. Just like on the bumper, it's silver behind the, uh, where the license plate mounts. It's, uh, they actually wrap the silver paint halfway around the license plate, uh, area. So I copied all of that just to keep it as accurate as possible to the real car. So tomorrow we will start on the black trim, which will involve more masking. And uh, see what we can do about getting that done. And then we're going to start on my favorite part, which is, which is the interior. Where we have the base uh, color coat on. Getting all the other pieces together. And uh, then we're going to continue with this kit. One little tip I got to give when you mask something off, make sure you mask it off completely. As I got quite a bit of overspray on this body after I did the silver where I thought I had ruined it. But uh, the Tamiya Fine Compound. Using it along with the Tamiya applicator here. I was able to clean it all off and save the paint job because I really thought I was looking at it and a stripped down job of stripping all the paint off and starting all over again but if you get it hit it before the paint totally cures you can clean the overspray off and not leave a mark on the color So there we go, the next step is all the black trim. Some of it will be semi-gloss, some of it will be high gloss. A clear coat, and then the body is done. All right guys, that's it for this video. And I guess I will catch you guys on the next one. We're getting closer and closer. All right. See you on the next one.